it's a wonderful morning that we are blessed and we are about to worship our Lord for the breath and life he has given unto us. So I like to
Jesus, even though we are your word, O oh God, we pray that Jehovah will be my friend, the minister of the day, Jehovah, that you are going to use my power, the people of Shema, that your good and perfect will is going to be done. We surrender our lives to the O oh God, and we pray that we are going to be done, that your good and perfect will be done, Jehovah. We thank you, Jehovah. We thank you, Jehovah. We thank you for what you have done, for what you are doing, and for what you are going to do. We surrender ourselves into your evil hands, O God, that you may lead us, Jehovah, according to your will. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray, trust, and believe. Amen. Let's give our mighty praise, God, Church. This morning, I'm born again. I'll read the readings from the book of Esther. Esther chapter 4. And I'll start from verse 12 to the end. Esther chapter 4, from verse 12 to 17. And I'll read. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back his answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. I will repeat verse 14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent his reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my, na- my mates will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all the Esther's instructions. And that is the word of God. Thank you, Lillian, for reading for us so well. Thank you, the praise and worship team. May God bless you. Uh, We can have our seats. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Tell your neighbor, don't miss the Esther moments. Don't miss the Esther moments. Just tell yourself, I don't want to miss the Esther moments. This morning I'm saved. My name is Miriam Jerry Wanyaga, and I thank God for an opportunity to serve him as a mother in this talent Sunday. I don't take it for granted, but I give him all the glory that even as a mother, I'm able to represent him and to serve him. And today we are going to look at the word from the book of Esther chapter 4, starting, and we are going to dwell on verse 14. Uh, Our reader led from verse 12 to the end, but verse 14 is where the key is. Most of us have read the book of Esther, and if you have not read the book of Esther, it has just a few chapters, and it is a very interesting read. It is a story when you start reading, it gets more interesting until you find yourself reading to the end and you ask yourself, you mean it may share to happen? And so Esther was a young lady who was orphaned, and was living with her cousin Mordecai. And Mordecai was closer to the king's success, the king of Persia, and he knew what was happening. So Mordecai got information that the king wanted another wife. Because the the wife's king, who is Vashiti, most of you know her, she was summoned by the king when the king was having a, a good moment, a pop party, and he wanted to show off his wife. But when the wife was called, she refused to go, and it really embarrassed the king, 
And so he asked advice from the other people who were advising him. And they told him, you know, if Vashti has done this, it means even our women will be doing that. And they'll be referring to what the queen did to the king. And so they gave the king an advice that he should look for another wife. And so the king looked for another wife and it was a process. So virgins were brought and they were to be selected. And the process of selection took a year of a, a beautiful girl to be presented before the king. And Esther was lucky to find somebody who was there, who is an, a eunuch, who was called Hegai, who prepared her. And the time came, all the virgins were taken before the king, and the king loved Esther. She won favor before the king. And so Mordecai, as he was still in his other duties, he overheard the people who are guarding the Paris, plotting to kill the king. And when he heard it, he told Esther. And Esther told the king. So the king sent one of his people, who is Haman, one of his advisors, he, to investigate. When Haman investigated, it was true, and the two people were killed. And so Haman was promoted by the king. And when he was promoted, other people were to respect Haman. And that is what Haman was looking for. He wanted to be respected by other people. And so he wanted everyone to bow before him. But now this cousin to Esther, who is Mordecai, refused to bow to Haman. And Haman was angry and he plotted to kill him. He even made a very big place, uh, a pole where he would hang Mordecai. But the anger was too much. He wanted to kill the whole tribe of Mordecai, which is a Jew. I don't think Haman knew Mordecai was cousin to Esther. And by the time Esther was going to be presented to the king, the cousin told him, do not disclose that you are a Jew. So Esther was there and he had not disclosed. So when Mordecai got to know that they are plotting to be killed, he went and prayed. He went out yelling loudly and praying and wailing with all the Jews and went even to the king's palace wearing a sack cloth, but he could not be let inside because it was not allowed with his clothing. So information got to Esther that uh, what Mordecai is doing, and she sent clothes for Mordecai, but he refused. He sent a message saying what has been plotted. And Esther sent another message and told the pastor, the eunuch, go tell him, if any man or woman goes to the king in the inner court, and sees the king without being summoned, that person must die. To see the king, you must have had an appointment. And even the queen was so afraid. She knew, if I go before the king, I might die. But Mordecai sent, her, sent back an interesting message. And he told, he said, don't imagine that you are safer than any other Jew just because you are in the royal palace. If you keep quiet at this time like this, he will help will come from heaven to the Jews and they will be saved. But you will die and your father's family will come to an end. Yet, who knows, maybe it was for a time like this that you were made a queen. When I was look, meditating on this word, I felt Esther was positioned by God in this place with a purpose. Divine positioning. Esther was an orphan. The reason maybe God had planned, planned for, his, for Esther being orphaned is because he knew one day Esther will be in the king's palace. And one day my people might face what Mordecai, what Haman was planning. And only someone who will be closer to the king can be able to redeem my people. And we see Esther was positioned there, living with Mordecai, who could get even information about the king with a reason. This morning, what is your purpose? Being positioned near the king, you are being positioned near God. You know God. Your position is much better than someone who does not know God. So your position to approach God is easier and you know the way. So Esther had the way to, knew the easier way to get to the king. But she was still afraid because of the protocols. But God had given her favor. 
we can see from the beginning when even Esther went to be presented, the eunuch already had, had favor towards Esther. Even the people Esther went before, she was favored. We see after that, Esther went and asked for prayers. He told Mordecai and his people to hold a fast and pray for her. She also had a fast with all the people who she was living with and all her attendants. Esther is a good example to us women of how much we should be intercessors, of how much we should stand in the gap. When things are not okay, it is not a time for us to be silent. Just because we have the comfort that we are the queens and we can live with the king, that when our people are perishing, you are too comfortable in that comfort zone that you are not able to stand for your people. We see, despite being the queen, she is able to pray and fast. She is able to keep the connection between her and her people. Most of the, us, when we get such moments, it is a time to forget about our families, our friends, the people whom we have been in poverty, and we feel to mefika. And it, who knows? It is a time as this, that you are placed where you are, that you know God, you know the way to the Lord, that you can be an intercessor. We are living in such a difficult time. When in the news we are hearing of how children are being defiled, of how people are killing each other, of how this disease has taken over. It is time for you, my brother and my sister. We know the king who is the Lord of Lords. We have the direct access to him. We do not need an appointment like this one that Esther needed to see the king. It is time for us to rise up, to get out of our comfort zone and address the issue and intercede on behalf of our nation, intercede on behalf of our children, intercede on behalf of our church, on behalf of our leaders. It is time. And that's why I started by telling you, do not miss the Esther moment. It is a moment like this you are not in hospital. It is a moment like this you have children. It is a moment like this that you are not suffering because you can stand and intercede on behalf of others. Do not miss this Esther moment to talk to your God. And when you go before God, go like Esther. When the king saw her, he won favor. And he asked her, what would you like, Esther? Even if it means giving you half of the empire, what would you like? And you know what Esther did? He told him, king, I would like to have a banquet with you, a party with you and Haman. And remember, this Haman is the same person who is plotting to kill Jews. And when they went to have the dinner, the king asked her, Esther, what do you want? even if it's half the emperor. But Esther told the king, I would like to host you tomorrow again. And Haman went back boasting to his people, it is good for us to be wise. When you want to tell God something, how do you approach him? Do you go boasting because you are the queen? Do you go, you know, you don't even need to, to be humble? Do you just go knowing that, you know, even if... The Jews are killed. I am in the palace. After all, if Jews were killed, Esther would not have a family or even ancestors to refer to. It is good for us, as ladies, as men, to be wise. When we go before the king, what do you ask? What do you tell God when you are going before him? We can look at another person who had access to the king. Let us look at Mark 6, starting from verse 21. We see this another person who had the favor of going before the king. But what do you ask when you go before the king? On Mark 6.21, you can read on your own. It is a story when Herod has had his birthday. And when he was having his birthday, a girl came and danced very well before the king. And the king was so happy. He called the girl. 
the, she was the daughter of Herodias and she asked her, you have danced very well. The king is vowing to give you anything you want. He was on oath. And this girl went and asked the mother, mom, what would you like me to ask the king? And some of us know what she asked. The girl asked for the head of John the Baptist. But the king had already vowed that he would give her whatever she would ask. And so that is how John the Baptist was beheaded and the mother was the head of John the Baptist was taken to the mother on a silver platter. What do you ask when you go before the king? Do you ask in wisdom or do you ask in foolishness? This morning, you are before the king of kings. What would you like the king to do for you? And if you do not ask, help is going to come from heaven. And you are going to vanish. But God is going to redeem his people. This morning, there is nothing as expensive as a wasted opportunity. Nothing is as expensive as a wasted opportunity. You have the opportunity to talk to your God. You have the opportunity to access the king so that he can have mercy on our nation, so that he can liberate our nation. Are you there and ready to stand for the nation? Let us stand. Let us stand. And let us have an Esther moment. We said we do not want to miss the Esther moment. Would you like to miss the Esther moment? Open your mouth and tell God something. This is your Esther moment. You are before the king and he is listening to you. What would you like the king to do to you? What are you asking the king to do for you this moment? You are just like Esther placed in the king's Paris. And here we are, a nation that is having so many diseases. So many things are happening under the sun. And here you are, and this is your Esther moment. What would you like the Lord to do this moment for our nation? What would you like to, the Lord to do for your family? What would you like the Lord to do for the church? It is your Esther moment. Please tell God something about it this morning. Kwanini jambo lipilo yeye asilo liweza Kwanini jambo lipilo Yeye asilo liweza. There is nothing impossible before you, God. All things are possible. And this morning we are here having our Esther moment requesting you, Lord, to have mercy on us. The same way, Lord, you sent to Esther when she was pleading to the king in regards to the Jews. Have mercy on us this morning. Listen to our prayers, O oh Lord. Listen to our petitions, King of all the glory. Listen to us, Lord, when we call you, O oh Holy Spirit of God. Give us wisdom to ask in wisdom as Esther did, and not to ask in foolishness as the Herodias daughter did. To ask the Holy Spirit to guide us, and not to ask like the daughter who went to ask the mother and gave the long counsel. Give us wisdom this morning, so that Lord we can be able to liberate our nation, so that Lord we can stand as Esther and save our nation, save our families, save our churches, save our businesses, save our everything, King of all the glory. We worship you this monument because you are able, my God. There is nothing that is too hard for you, Lord. You are able to do it. May we not miss our Esther moment this morning. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.